Hello and welcome to this course. This course is planned to be a part of the larger one, which will be dedicated to Windows Server 2016 administration. In this course we'll be reviewing the following topics. The main topic of this course will be configuring local storage on Windows Server 2016. Here what is planned in this course. I am planning to have a lesson dedicated to managing disks in Windows Server, maybe several lessons, and several lessons dedicated to managing volumes in Windows Server. We'll also have several demonstrations and lab activity in this course. And in the end of this course we'll be having course review and takeaways. Now let's start with overall overview. Storage is one of the key components that you must consider when planning and deploying the Windows Server 2016 operating system. Most organizations require a great deal of storage because users work regularly with apps that create new files which in turn require storage in a certain location. When users keep their files for a longer period of time, all the while adding more files, storage demands increase. Therefore, it is important that you know how to manage disks and volumes in Windows Server 2016 to help meet the storage needs for your users. So after completing this course you'll be able to manage disks in Windows Server and manage volumes in Windows Server. So let's get started and first we'll talk about managing disks in Windows Server. Identifying which storage technology that you want to deploy is the first critical step in addressing the data storage requirements for your organization. However, this is only the first step. You also must determine the best way to manage that storage and should ask yourself the following questions. Which disks are going to allocate us to a storage solution? And which file systems will you use? So let's explore these questions. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to explain how to select a partition table format, describe the difference between basic and dynamic disk types, explain how to select a file system, describe a resilient file system, configure resilient file system or ReFS, implement virtual hard disks, and determine the disk type that best meets your requirements. Let's talk about selecting a partition table format. A partition table format or partitional style refers to the method that an operating system such as Windows Server 2016 uses to organize partitions of volumes on a disk. For Windows operating systems you can decide between a master boot record or MBR and a globally unique identifier or GUID partition table. An abbreviation for it is GPT. MBR. The MBR partition table format is a standard partitioning scheme that has been used on hard disks since the inception of personal computers in 1980s. The MBR partition table format has the following characteristics. An MBR partition supports a maximum of four primary partitions per drive. It can have a maximum size of two terabytes. If you initialize a disk larger than two terabytes using MBR, the disk stores volumes only up to 2 terabytes, and the rest of the storage is not used. You must convert the disk to GPT if you want to use all of its space. As a note here, you can use the MBR partition table format for disk drives that never surpass 2 terabytes in size. 
This provides you with a bit more space because GPT requires more disk space than MBR. Now to GPT. GPT format was introduced with Windows Server 2003 and the Windows XP 64-bit edition to overcome the limitations of MBR and to address the requirement of larger disks. GPT has the following characteristics. GPT supports a maximum of 128 partitions per drive, so it's much more than MBR. A partition can have up to 18 exabytes, again, comparing to MBR much more. A hard drive disk can have up to 8 zettabytes, unbelievable number, with 112 kilobytes logical block addressing or LBA. And the last characteristic of GPT is that to boot from G a GPT partition table, your BIOS must support GPT. So if your hard drive is larger than 2 terabytes, you must use the GPT partition table format.